Hello and welcome to a new travel report. In November 2019 I decided to make a short trip to Buenos Aires in Argentina. I used all of my bonus points on Norwegian and flew down there and I didn't want to stay all the time in Buenos Aires. So I did a little bit of research and uh, took a look at TripAdvisor and other sites. What can you do when you're down in Argentina? I found reports about this great national park in northern Argentina at the border to Brazil and Paraguay. The national park is known for its waterfalls and is a world natural heritage. And uh, before you tell me I am stupid, it is a day trip of over a thousand kilometers north and back in the evening to the south. Uh, but I had to do it. It was quite cheap and I read so many good things that I said this I have to do. This airport is in the middle of nowhere. We came in over the rainforest and I saw no houses, no cities whatsoever. The closest city is Puerto Iguazu, which is uh, 18 kilometers from the national park and directly at the border to Brazil. This time I will include a few pictures in my video since I didn't film everything. The first picture is the new terminal they were building at the time. And the second picture is my car that I get from a local rental, which was great. American style car, I liked it. And to confess already at the beginning of the video, I think I am one of the few people who got a ticket for speeding inside the rainforest. A lovely surprise on your credit card a few weeks after you came home. The biggest part of the national park is on the Argentinian side and the smaller part is on the Brazilian side. As you will see in a moment, there are six circuits you can walk in the national park on the Argentinian side. Because of my limited time, I chose to make two tours. I did the orange tour, which I am sitting on the train to right now because it would be too long to walk. And I did the blue one, which were both great, but I wish they had more time. Those guys look really cute, but there are signs everywhere. Don't feed them, don't touch them, they will bite you. And all the humans here in the National Park have to eat their meals inside the cage you see over there. Great. I am sitting now on the Rainforest Ecological Train, which will take me from one of three stations in the National Park to the Devil's Throat Waterfalls, which is about two kilometers from the starting point. The train takes about 250 people and it will take between 15 or 20 minutes, depending on how many visitors the park has. Since I was here in late November, there weren't that many tourists, so great for me. Let's compare the Iguazu Falls to Niagara Falls, which are also very well known. They are about 50% higher than Niagara Falls, 82 meters compared to 54 meters. They are 2.7 kilometers wide which is three times the amount of Niagara Falls. And it, they have 275 drops compared to the Niagara Falls. The longest drop on Iguazu Falls is Devil's Throat, where I'm on the way to now. Niagara Falls is 62 meters. And uh, Iguazu Falls, as I said, is a UNESCO World Natural Heritage, which Niagara Falls is not. The only thing they win is the yearly visitors. Niagara Falls has about 12 million visitors per year and Iguazu only has 1.64 million. The name Iguazu comes from the indigenous people in the region. The Spanish translation would be Agua Grande, which is big water, and you will see later that this name is quite correct. In 1984, the UNESCO declared Iguazu National Park as World Heritage and in 2011, the new Seven Wonders Foundation declared it a new wonder of the world. It's a long walk from the station to the falls and after me taking a picture of everything, I can tell a little bit more about Devil's Throat. I have to apologize a little bit for the shaking of my camera. I hit the wrong button on my DJI Osmo Pocket. That happens.
You leave at the Gaganta station, you can take the path that takes you directly to the Devil's Throat. And uh, it's a nice long walk, it was warm weather, it was really, really great. Uh, the good thing about this walk is it will take you directly to the fall and you only will be meters from Devil's Throat, which is the main attraction in the park. I said earlier that it's two kilometers with the train, but then you have to do 2.2 kilometers on this path to get to the falls. Devil's Throat is the main attraction in the park, so if you get here, be early, be there before all the other tourists come here, be on one of the first trains so that you can enjoy the walk and the view without too many people around you. They have a lot of nice resting points along the way, you can take beautiful pictures. When it comes to the entry fee for the national park, it is quite reasonable. For adults it's about 15 US dollars and for children between the ages of 6 and 12 it's about 5 dollars. One small piece of advice, when you get to the platform there is an area where you have to pay to take pictures. They say it's the best area to take pictures from, but I found out there are a lot of good places which you don't have to pay for. So don't fall for this tourist trap. I will come to a conclusion of my talking now because I wanted to hear the waterfalls later on. Uh, I did the lower circuit after I was here and it was beautiful. You get a panoramic view of the falls. It's highly recommended and the one thing I would say is one day is definitely not enough. If you are here, stay here, do several days, do the Brazilian side of the falls. It's just amazing and take your time. I will leave some links to Uigazu Falls information about the national park in the description of the video. Thanks for joining me on my special travel report today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed yet, now it would be a good time to do so. And you're welcome to leave a comment and like. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you on my next travel report. And until then, live with no excuses and travel with no regrets. And I hope we all can do so very soon in the future. Stay safe.